All right, so uh, we are now down to the last um, or second difficulty. So let me uh, write this as case two. Um, uh, all zero row in the route array. Okay. In fact, uh, when you have this difficulty, it actually gives us uh, quite a lot more information about the uh, closed loop poles. Okay. So uh, this happens. Uh, under special circumstances. Uh, in fact, uh, when we have a symmetry condition, uh, when we have a symmetry condition around the j omega axis, okay? So what they can be is that you can have two real poles, real poles, uh, symmetric around the j omega axis, symmetric around the j omega axis or you have uh, a pair of cons a pair of pair of complex conjugate complex conjugate poles on the j omega axis because this also uh, consists a symmetry around the geomega axis in a sense, okay? Um, or you, you have four poles that are symmetric around the geomega axis, okay? Four complex conjugate poles, okay? So if you have two pairs, two complex conjugate pairs, around uh, or symmetric 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 sorry we should have two m's right symmetric symmetric is with the one m right uh, symmetric uh, around the G omega axis. Okay. So uh, what this means is that you can have, for example, uh, a pole configuration like this, uh, minus one and plus one. Okay. Uh, you can alternatively have things like uh, basically on the G omega axis plus uh, two J Uh, plus j2 omega, uh, no, sorry, plus j2 and minus j2, for example, uh, a possibility. Or you can have, uh, let's say, at uh, minus 2, plus 2, and then you have uh, here two poles at uh, j1, another one over here. Okay, so symmetric... Um, a complex conjugate pair with uh, which is at minus uh, okay minus two plus j one minus two minus j one and um, plus two plus j one plus two minus j one okay so this configuration also cons uh, consists of a symmetry around the geomega axis okay remember this is our geomega axis this is our real uh, axis and this is our S plane, what we call the S plane. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at uh, an example. Now, this has a different fix. Okay, um, so this has an entirely different fix uh, to numerically deal with this zero row. Okay, so let us construct an example. Um, Okay, uh, and I'm going to construct this example from the original pole. So I'm going to have Q of S uh, equals to S plus 1, uh, S minus 1. So, uh, and then S plus 2, 
uh, and s minus 3. Okay, so you can see that we have two unstable poles, but also, so two unstable poles, also a symmetry uh, around the j omega axis because of this symmetrically located uh, stable and unstable poles. Okay, so if you expand this, uh, we will get this polynomial, which is uh, S4 minus S cube minus 7 uh, S square uh, plus S plus 6. Okay, so uh, we have S4, S3, S2, S1, S0. So all the coefficients are there. Uh, we have a sign change of the coefficients, so we know that this is an unstable uh, characteristic equation. So let us construct the route array and see what happens. Uh, S4, S3, S2, S1, and S0. So from the given uh, coefficients, I have 1, I have minus 1, I have minus 7, uh, plus 1, I have 6, and 0. Okay? So, uh, the first uh, row over here is uh, minus 1 times minus 7, which makes a 7, minus 1 uh, divided by minus 1. So, it's 7 minus 1, 6. Uh, over minus 1, it is minus 6 as our first entry over here, minus 6, okay? What about the second one? Uh, clearly, because this entry is 0, so that's going to end up with uh, uh, this entry over here, right? So I will have 6. Why? Because it's minus 1 times 6, minus 0 over minus 1, so that gives us this entry, okay? Now let's take a look at what happens in the next row. Uh, I have minus 6, so minus 6, uh, minus, minus 1 times 6, so it makes uh, minus minus plus 6, uh, over um, minus 6, but that is a 0. Okay, uh, what about here? Uh, well, all the entries over here are 0, so this one is also another 0. So I have an uh, all 0 row. Okay, row of zeros. Okay, so uh, now what we do here is basically we go to the row that is just on top, okay, of this uh, row of zeros, and the polynomial over here, uh, remember, uh, if you consider this, this is the s square row. So there is a polynomial here. We call this polynomial p of s, which is equal to minus 6 s square uh, plus 6 equals to 0 as the uh, auxiliary polynomial. Polynomial. Okay? And if we solve this, okay, uh, so if we solve this, that means minus 6s squared plus 6 equals to 0, and that means minus s squared plus 1 is equal to 0, and s squared is equal to 1, and therefore we have uh, from here s is equal to uh, plus minus 1, okay? So the solution... Uh, if it is solvable, because in this case it's a second-order polynomial and we can solve it, uh, actually solution uh, gives us uh, the symmetric uh, poles. In this case, two of them, right? If we take a look at the top, uh, you see that uh, we had these two poles symmetrically located around the g-omega axis, and in fact... Uh, the solution gives us those two poles. So, in fact, sometimes this difficulty is a good thing. But if, for example, this auxiliary polynomial is of degree 4, 
uh, you will not be able to solve it because uh, we cannot solve a fourth order polynomial uh, equated to zero uh, by hand. Okay? But still, even if you cannot solve this, what you can do is that you uh, replace uh, the all zero row by the coefficients of of uh, the derivative of the auxiliary polynomial dp of s over uh, ds okay uh, what is this uh, in our case it's going to be uh, uh, minus 2s minus 2s plus 0 okay so uh, so if we do that uh, uh, what happens is that this row, instead of being all zeros, it now becomes minus 2 and 0. And you continue with that. Okay, so what happens is that uh, instead of this 0 row, now you have minus 2. So minus 2 times 6, uh, minus 0 over minus 2, so you will have... Uh, uh, Obviously, we, we have uh, simplified uh, this thing. So this has become uh, minus, minus 1. Okay, so... Uh, okay, let's do it this way. Uh, instead of this, uh, let us use the original coefficients. Okay, so uh, that means uh, minus 6 s squared. So this is going to be minus 12 s uh, plus 0. Okay, so this is going to be a minus 12. So what we will have over here is that minus 12 times 6 minus 0 over minus 12. So we will have a 6 here. Okay. So uh, if you look at the first column, but you need to be careful because this now has become uh, this, this row. Okay, so what you have here is that you have one sign change from 1 to minus 1, then it stays minus 1, minus 6, minus 12, and then another sign change over here. Uh, so we have uh, a total of two sign changes. Okay, uh, two sign changes. And that means two unstable poles. Okay, so, uh, but you see, we have gained uh, more insight into the system because apart from uh, being able to tell uh, that we have two unstable poles, as you can see here, the S minus one is an unstable pole and S minus three is an unstable pole, but we were also able to actually find exactly uh, two of the poles. So uh, what is more, okay, we have exactly found uh, two of the poles. Now, obviously, uh, you can, at this point, you can find all the poles, because if you know two of the poles, uh, that means you can uh, construct a polynomial out of these two poles, and then you can divide the original polynomial into this new polynomial, and you can find the residual polynomial and you can find uh, that's going to be a quadratic. So you can also solve the rest of the poles. Okay. So uh, note. You can even find the rest of the poles by dividing uh, that means long division, polynomial division, uh, by dividing Q of S by uh, S plus 1, S minus 1 product. Okay? All right. 
Uh, let me also put a special note. Uh, Uh, when you have a repeated complex conjugate pair on the j omega axis, okay, if you have a condition like this where you have uh, repeated complex conjugate poles on the j omega axis, if you have repeated uh, complex conjugate uh, pairs, on the j omega axis uh, the system we know that the system is unstable uh, but uh, the Raoultowitz criteria but the Raoultowitz Raoultowitz uh, criteria may not give a conclusive answer okay so uh, please uh, see other other examples uh, examples and discussion uh, in the textbook as well okay and uh, please note uh, notes uh, Emre Hoca uh, have uh, additional examples uh, uh, on on a YouTube recording Uh, but I believe that he started from the second difficulty. Uh, that means this case two. Uh, so on this case two, uh, he has additional examples. And also uh, he has another very good example on uh, how we can determine the range of uh, the poles um, by a shift of the uh, real axis and using Raoult Horvitz criteria. Okay. So uh, that's the end of uh, my uh, my discussion of the Raoult Horvitz criteria. Uh, Emre Hoca will start um, the root locus technique on Monday, um, and I'm not gonna be uh, recording anything on root locus. So he has taken over um, the root locus method. So he will be talking about the root locus method, uh, and we will kind of uh, take turns in uh, recording videos for you. Okay. So uh, see you on uh, some other video uh, and I hope this is going uh, relatively uh, pro uh, problem free for you guys.